we were discussing about the chapter 10 on immunization where we have talked about the immune and immunization immunization is a process of giving the portion or the whole bacteria or virus or the component of the pathogen into the body so that antibody response will be elicited and there will be the that memory shell or say the antibody will be in the body for the longer period of time and when actually we get infected by the real live pathogens the pathogenic one the toxinic one this protective antibody will prevent that pathogenic bug or bacteria or virus to infect us or to make us seriously ill so that is the mean of immunization and when a person get cured from any uh, diseases then that is color person has become immune we have talked about the vaccination and in types of uh, we have talked about the types of immunity and also about the vaccination in the vaccination we have talked about the live vaccine which we have given the formula like mr vijay uh, psyche where you have discussed about the live vaccine there was a not a non-attenuated live vaccine as well that is adenovirus virus only used in the military u.s military population then there was the killed vaccine then there we have talked about the toxoid vaccine and we also have discussed about this polysaccharide vaccine this vaccine polysaccharide vaccine is a common vaccine that is usually we know this polysaccharide component except the uh, protein component all this lipid fat or say carbohydrate this all component are directly processed by the b antigen and then get activated in the plasma cell and form the antibody but that antibody and doesn't that cell that there is no memory cell there is no memory there is no record in our body of that uh, type of activation and the antibody that is formed have short lifetime and that will go only after a few days of antibody protection so we need to give the conjugate vaccine we need to conjugate those protein with the we need we need to conjugate this all this polysaccharide that is the carbohydrate lipid and with the protein component so they become a protein com complex and then since they become a protein complex they are be processed by the t cell then activate the b cell and form the memory shell so the main concept of giving vaccine is to provide a longer immunity and for that we need a T cell dependent pathway antibody activation and for that it needs to be a protein in nature so sometimes we know the capsule the capsular polysaccharides of the many bacteria are made of the uh, carbohydrate polysaccharide component so for that we need in this in such scenario we need to conjugate with the with the protein component so polysaccharide vaccine has less role it is given to a very rare situation like if a patient is splenectomy or have a copd and in those patients when the world where the immune system has come down there cannot be activated like uh, people who are uh, is more than 65 years in that scenario only we go for this polysaccharide vaccination or sometime in the sequential vaccination we give this polysaccharide vaccine mainly of the streptococcus pneumonia that causes the severe pneumonia and causes death of the patient the polysaccharide vaccine will be directly exposed to the b cell that will convert into the plasma cell there will be no memory there will be a short term memory from there will be the short term protection from the antibody that is formed in the body and so because of that we give the polysaccharide vaccine only to the uh, it, uh, you can say that there is severely indicated patient like person who is more than 65 years or special circumstances like splenectomy or severe patient talking about the conjugate vaccine those uh, polysaccharides or lipid vaccine that cannot uh, form the memory shell they are usually conjugated with the protein component so compromise a capsular polysaccharide conjugate to the protein usually a toxoid this create a t cell dependent immune response with the class which can class switch creates a booster response to the multiple doses and the vaccine examples are like amphalous influenza type b then streptococcus pneumonia pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and nizaria meningitis vaccine so these are the vaccine that can be actually uh, have the conjugate vaccine and the main role of to, to conjugate this protein this uh, with protein was to make this capsular polysaccharide a t cell dependent immune response that can class switch so you can see over here this is the linear peptide epitope that has been has a carrier protein and so carrier protein is there that has been processed and presented by msc class 2 to the t cell and t cell get activated now once t cell is activated that can activate the b cell and form the memory shell so t cell dependent pathway will leads to the formation of the memory shell and that can give the robust Im immunity if there is a, another booster dose or second exposure as well as they will form the memory that can last long there is another vaccine called the component vaccine and the main 
uh, role of this component vaccine as sometimes we what we do we uh, form this uh, like if, if you see the example of hepatitis b virus uh, vaccine and uh, also the human papilloma virus vaccine what do we do compromise on the immunodominant protein from the virus that is grown in the yeast cell so we take the gene for example in hepatitis b vaccine the gene coding for the hepatitis surface antigen is inserted into the yeast cell which then release this molecule into the culture medium and the molecule is then purified and used as immunogen in the vaccine so main thing is that the the hbs az ins inserted into the cell and that is the gene actually so this gene encoding this hbs az that is surface antigen is inserted into the yeast cell and then yeast cell when grow they really when they transcribe they get translated this protein is released then we purify that protein from the culture media which is actually identical epitope identical antigen as the surface antigen because the gene has been encoded of this hbs az they can be purified and then put in the vaccine and given to you now there is no virus actually there was only a gene that was encoded into the yeast cell that has multiplied that had grown and this was formed and then they were purified and put into the vaccine and given to you so if i suppose i have i have really taken this hbs az vaccination so there is only antibody against surface antigen of hepatitis b virus other e antigen or core antigen is not present because i have never exposed to hepatitis b virus if i would have exposed to the hepatitis b virus and get cured means immune then i would have antibody against surface antigen antibody against core antigen antibody against e antigen but since i am only immunized not immune so i will have only the antibody against the surface antigen the component vaccine uses hepatitis b virus and also the human papilloma virus so these two are the uh, vaccine component are the example of actually component vaccine okay so we have understood about certain like component vaccine we have talked about this uh, conjugate vaccine you know why we have conjugated we have polysaccharide vaccine we have toxoid vaccine we have killed vaccine and we have live vaccine so these all are the vaccine component vaccine that are available okay now talking about the immune responses secondary and subsequent responses the when an antigen is introduced into the system for a second time the response of the lymphocyte is accelerated and the result amplified over the primary immune response the increased sport speed of this response is due to the presence of memory cell which i was discussing repeat and repeat repeatedly the memory cell progeny of the primary response throughout the body the increased amplitude of the factor production is due to the fact that activation clone being much large pool of respondent so you can see there is the x antigen that uh, they has been activated to the they have been presented and processed to, to the knife cell which has been activated and there is formation of the plasma cell as well as the memory cell now second time when there is again this x antigen x antigen is again exposed what will happen it has the previous memory cell so this will again now there will be a c this activated cell mainly of the x response is more in comparison to the this y antigen which has been exposed to the first time and the response is less so you have to understood you have to understand that if it is a second time exposure the immune response will be robust will be increased will be more in comparison to the primary response and this is because this is because there is already the memory cell present over there and there will be more cell responding to the antigen so there will be more antibody formation and they, that is called robust in immunity or say high response or say more response okay now there is last uh, last point we need to understand about the babies and what happened to the uh, this is called the uh, what we call acquisition of immuno immunoglobulins in the fetum and neonate so persistent of maternal antibodies affect vaccination and actually i can dis i will discuss in the next chapter but you have to understand one thing that the baby which is born actually they are protected by the antibody that is that has been formed that has been transferred from the mother to the baby through the placenta and through the breast milk so the mother the more mother has overcome the disease more vaccination the mother has formed the more antibody is in her body and the more the antibody is in mother body that will be actually transferred through the placenta and breast milk to the baby and the baby will be protected from this immunity for a quite quite period of time and in that period although the baby is newborn they have the preformed that is the natural passive immunity is there and because of that the baby will not be affected with the many diseases thank you